Welcome back. Going into the second half here of old drop frames. Zeke, you know what you should do? You should actually not do that. It's very bad and dangerous for your ears. Order a, uh, there's not a, that, apparently, huh? You should apparently not do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Get there. No, there's, I don't, I don't... You can get a squirt bottle thing from, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon and it'll do the trick. It's really good. You know what else? I've, I got, I have, uh, earwigs as well. <laughs> oh, is that, is that the thing where you like hold, wait, what is earwigs? Yep. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I was about like, to say, you light a flame and put your ear over it, but that sounds really silly. But is that what you do? Oh, you put it, oh, you, damn it. You unplug your headphones. Yeah. No, it's, it's the other way. You put, you put it like this and you put it, the cone in here and you light the top because the, the oxygen ah. or the fire, fire needs oxygen. So it, it's, I, I think that's how it works. And it sucks up all the, uh, all go. the ear stuff. Got they actually, it's pretty amazing how much, like even after a clean, how much is left still in there. And also, I don't, I don't put the Q-tip like deep in my ear. I just, I just swap. Gotta I actually just swap. <laughs> yeah, can't go too deep. We're already gonna have bad uh, tinnitus or tinnitus. <laughs> we gotta oh, watch. I that since I was a kid, dude. I, I, man, I don't. I gotta figure out what is causing mine because the other day it sounded like two seven forty sevens were parked right next to both of my ears. I just couldn't hear shit <laughs> at all for like twenty four hours. Damn. It was real bad. I don't know if it was like uh, stress related or what, but I went to sleep. It was gone the next day. So mine's the opposite. I've, I've had tinnitus since I was really, really quiet. But for me, it's if there is no other sound and I have, like Oh, you can hear it. Extremely high pitched sound that never goes away. I've, I've ne I have no memory of ever hearing silent. Mm. That makes There's sense. Always like a high pitch, like sound. Absolutely. So yeah. I sleep with like four ocean sound things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you have to at that point. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Sorry, my dog's making a lot of noise. Uh, like I said, there's not much news. It's essentially just name a company and they're no longer selling stuff in Russia. Uh, it's kind of across the board now. Um, everyone's getting out uh, of selling stuff over there. Uh, there was Guardians of the Galaxy is coming to Game Pass. You all should definitely play that game if you have not and you have Game Pass. Uh, that is absolutely worth worth your time. It's a great game. It really was that our drop frames game of the year. I think it was right. Didn't we vote that as? Yeah, I think that was our our game of the year. Uh, consensus vote, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the multiplayer lead on Halo Infinite has left three four three Industries. That's not a good headline uh, with where that current uh, multiplayer is residing at the moment. Um, Obviously, it doesn't mean anything except that he left, but it's still not a good look whatsoever for Microsoft. Resident Evil 2, 3, and 7 are coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S with visual enhancements later this year. They didn't really specify what that meant. Um, and I'm also curious if that means that the VR version is going to look better. Because I have to think that the... I don't know if it would, because the... I guess the PlayStation VR headset doesn't do any computing. It's just like an out. It's like a monitor out. So it, I guess it could look better in there uh, in some fashion. We'll see if they comment on that at all. And uh, I think that is kind of it. There's news related stuff as it uh, pertains to things like Babylon's Fall. That game has peaked at 650 players on steam and its first 24 hours i think it got above a thousand uh i don't know what it's currently at but we're gonna go to uh more from our uh, infield reporter co carnage out there living the babylon's fall how uh, what's going on how's that game is it what's happening in it so um i did a uh Hold on, hold on. Well, uh, by the way, it's co with two H's, no biggie. Uh, sorry, Twitch just tweeted me out as C O H Carnage. Um, Very in important. their new video. Hey. Nice. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thanks, Twitch. Um, you know, I haven't been here almost nine years. Uh, anyway, so it's an uh, intern. It's Give him a break. <laughs> probably, probably. Uh, so it's the kind of thing where here, here's the deal. I got asked a lot about Babylon's Fall. And they approached me and said, you want to do a sponsor stream for it? And I said, sure. I mean, it's Platinum Games, right? Um, we'll check it out. Yeah. So there's a lot of times when people say, um, that, like I just did, like I just about Elden Ring. 
Uh, Elden Ring is from software at its best. Um, Babylon's Fall is Platinum Games at its worst. It is, it is, <laughs> it is frankly, um, it is a, for me, there was nothing about the game that I felt was good. <laughs> I that word um, the, the combat Man. was, the combat was, was incredibly clunky. The levels were as basic as they could possibly be. The mechanics were, were devoid in most cases. Um, it, it's a $60 game that has a seven season pass. I thought oh, 70 most cases. It has a free seasons pass and a premium, which you can pay for seasons pass on top of that. It has free to play mechanics in, in like a lobby system. The game actually didn't even make any sense with the main story. At one point it said like, it specifically said that, that they are burying into this, this, uh, this obelisk ziggurat thing and that they found the enemies in there while they were digging them out. And then later they talk about how they're dropping in. Like it's, the, the voice acting was not very good. The characters were boring. The cutscenes didn't look good. It's got this weird filter over it that makes it look like a painting that doesn't really work. Um, it looks like a PS3 game. Like I can't, it, it's just, it was, it, as I said at the end of the sponsored portion, for a game like this to work for me, it has to have a part of it that grabs me and absolutely nothing in this game grabs me. Like the gameplay is not good enough. The story is not good enough. The world isn't interesting enough. Like the, the, the inventory system was lackluster. Like it, there was nothing in this game that grabbed me at all. Um, and, and honestly, uh, especially coming from Platinum Games, expected so much more than this. Um, like. <laughs> You know, this is this is the Bayonetta people. This is the the near Automata people. Like, yeah. I, I'm not really sure how this game made okay. it to release. No, wait, was that near? Was it near? Automata? No, that wasn't near. That uh, was it the other. Not near. It was Bayonetta, and what's the other big one? I'm blanking now. It's all right. Bayonetta is a big enough name. They did though. do. They did do near Automata. Oh, they yeah. did. Oh, why yeah. did I? Yeah. Okay. They did Metal they did. Gear Revengeance or whatever too, right? But anyway, uh, like, a, like this, 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 these they're... guys are, are generally pretty good, but it's just this game is just it's just not a good game. It's not a good game. Like it's it's just it's very thrown together. It's uh, it's very like especially the thing that's really so telling about it is the missions are literally like arena fight, run corridor to next area, arena fight, run corridor to next area. Oh, man. Like it's it's like a Sonic game picking up rings. You just pick up these gems that are just laying around. Uh, every so often there's like these super basic like spikes coming out of the floor you have to jump over and sometimes there's just like you walk up and there'll be like a giant press lb button to like pull over them like it's just it's just it's just not good it's weird like especially coming from this game where where or coming from that company it's just it's just not by the time i was done i literally <clears throat> said at the end of the sponsor stream i will not be playing this again like so i'm I just I'm curious because I've done sponsored streams where I didn't like the game, not necessarily that the game was bad. When you're playing a game that's like bad, did you just handle yourself the same way that you just did in terms of talking about I, it? Because I, basically, I mean, I mean it's just like, like, like I little, no, no. At the end of the sponsor stream, I I specifically said for a game like this to work, like a, like a part of it needs to it's be got good. It, like yeah, for Borderlands, it. it's like the gameplay, you know, and like. But for the, in this game, there's nothing about it that I feel carries the rest of the game. Okay. Like the voice acting is subpar. The characters are subpar. The world is subpar. The graphics are subpar. The gameplay is subpar. Like the inventory and looting system subpar. Like everything about it is, there's nothing that's in it that's just like good. There's yeah. so many better options, especially now to spend your time in to, to release a game of this quality right now, as we see, is just, there's no point to do it. You might as well not release the game. Um, you might, you might as well just keep working on it. Try to make at least one part of it really good and, yeah. and then, you know, release it when, when the world is maybe more receptive to something that is not quite up to the quality level of everything else, else that's out right now. And then especially, especially to charge $60 for this game and have an in-game purchasable game battle pass type system is just, it's just it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That's wild. Well, I, I didn't hear a single good thing about it. Uh, I'm glad one of us played it so we can at least <laughs> know why. Yeah, or I, hey, I, I, I took the sponsored stream so I could I could come up with my own opinion to tell people that asked me, and that's exactly what I did, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, my, my opinion is nothing about this game grabbed me, yeah. especially for 60 bucks. At $30, it would be a hard a struggle. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I get it. I get it. Well, that's the uh, the short and sweet <laughs> thoughts on Babylon's Fall. Do not play this game. Do you think something like Game Pass saves this, or is it still not even like worth your time? I. It's like a worse Godfall. Like at least with Godfall, the, whoa. That was at least bad. with Godfall, like I had fun playing it. Like the gameplay of Godfall was fun. It just lacked in so many other areas. But with the, it, it's like it's like a a least a less fun Godfall with worse graphics not as interestingly a, a world a inter- engaging world which is a lot considering godfalls was again very thrown together yeah and just and then, and then the, the 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 lobby really does feel kind of free to play in the way that it's just so basic and 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 the the whole battle passing on top of it is just like it's they really do expect you to to put more money into it like they want to incentivize you to put more money into it after a 60 dollars purchase and, and even that in a good game is a little weird you know yeah. so i don't know man I I I can I I can't think of many instances where I would recommend this game over another game in terms of like spending your time playing <clears throat> game. Yeah. Strange stuff. Strange stuff. Well, that's the old uh, Babylon's Fall. Uh I always mispronounce this. Elix 2? Elix? Yeah, Elix 2. Elix yeah, 2. Absolutely. You both played it. Uh, Zeke did a sponsored stream for it. I mm-hmm. I don't know if Coz was sponsored as well. I did. Um, I, I played it for about 10 hours and then did a sponsor stream. Okay, cool. I'm playing uh, again tonight. Great. Zeke, we'll start with you because I know Co uh, obviously played the first one. I was a big fan of the first one. How'd you feel about uh, old Elix 2? I've watched a handful of trailers. It looks about what I expected from this game. How did you feel about it? <laughs> it looks like it, uh, like, I don't know what it is, but it looks like it, it was made 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's some like scenery, like beautiful scenery, good like vistas and, and, and grass and trees and rocks and boulders and stuff. But then you get like up close and, and you're talking with them. It really is. Why is no, why is everyone bald? It seems like, yeah. And that's another thing, which was, which was strange. <laughs> right off of that. I made a comment about that. Like in the future, bald is beautiful. And everybody, everybody adheres to that. Uh, well, most people adhere to that, but yeah, there's a lot of bald people in the game, but, uh, it looks like, yeah, it looks like, uh, when you get up close and start talking to people, it's like kind of like fallout three, I would say is like the, the graphical capabilities of this. And I'm wondering why that is, uh, I didn't know, like, did they not like the money that went into the game? I, I and granted, I only played it for like two and a half hours. So like, did the money in the, like that went into the game go to are you gonna fucking chill out or not <laughs> are you in your little circle no figure it out lay down thank you gotta figure out the exact spot i guess anyways uh did the money go to like something else in the game because it, it not only that but it the the combat seemed very imprecise it seemed a little like the, the word you're looking for is janky I didn't want to say janky though, like because janky oh, it's means it's, is yeah, it's a little jank, dude. It really is. <laughs> oh um, my god, what are you trying to shoot? Just <gasps> a chicken. You killed the chicken and got ten XP. Yeah, I mean, yeah, their destruction yeah. increased slightly. There's a morality yeah. system in the game. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I went. I did. I I went all all destruction for my two and a half hour choices. Okay. Um, but look, I mean, look in the background. See those mountains and the trees and all that stuff. Looks beautiful, right? Like the, then there's the mouth movements and the conversations that you have and all that kind of stuff with like character models. They're just not not like up to what you think 2022 would have available. Yeah. And the combat is is just it's like you're 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 walking around swinging your sword and there's like there is a targeting system, but it doesn't seem like like you lose targets if you like move around them and stuff. I don't know. Maybe I need more time with it or needed more time with it. <laughs> yeah. But it didn't feel great. <laughs> Is it an open con- world game? Yes. Okay. Uh, but it also like, it, I don't know. It didn't, it, it didn't grab me right away. Story-wise either. But maybe that's because I didn't finish the first one. I play, I, I played the first one for, uh, a while. Um, let me see. 
Like I got, I got, I had actually had some some decent hours into it. Yeah, sixteen hours. I put sixteen hours into the first one. So you know, that's not nothing. Yeah. Um, so I must have liked that, but I can't see myself doing that with this one. <laughs> did now did the first Elix? Because the first Elix came out uh, five years ago, twenty seventeen. You know, four and a half. Whatever. Is it years really ago. that? Bit? Oh my god. Yeah, twenty seventeen, October twenty seventeen. Jesus. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, I play a lot of, a lot, a lot of games. The first one had, oh, it was like all like, like techie. Like it was like uh cyber tech, uh, battles and, and like, you got like metal arms and shit like that. Right. Or like metal armor is part of the game. Yeah, like yeah. Left arm, right arm, right leg, left leg shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think there's, I think that exists in this one too, at least from the trailers, but Maybe the oh, yeah. beginning just doesn't. You can, you can get cybery stuff in this one too. The Slaker. Yeah. 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 But right, I mean, right off the bat, it's just like, where's all my cyber shit? I'm beating shit with a pipe and I'm wearing clothes like that aren't, don't have any beep, beeps or lights on it and shit. And like, I was a little like upset <laughs> to be honest with you. Cause I was like, I liked Elix. I went, I went back and looked. I was like, I played the first one for 16 hours. I will accept your sponsored stream. And I was like, man, I really wanted to like this more than i did yeah i just everyone looks yeah. like it's like northern lions ancestors like what is, what is going on here I'll just, <laughs> okay there's some why why are you well, laughing check at out, Dex? Check, out this, check out this kid with an adult face <laughs> <laughs> look kids are hard to make in video games man so is hair so is hair. you just he just shrunk down like a, a normal, like a, a, an average adult sized person and called it a kid. <laughs> just turn the meter down. <laughs> Why are you following him? I think this is some. He's my kid. That's my kid. <laughs> oh, that's your kid? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. My kid. All right. That makes a little more sense. Uh, also, the choice of not having the, the fanny jetpack. Oh, that's. We had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> the fanny jetpack? Like, there was so many, like. Is that like a, is, is he flying around with the power of farts? You know, is it a fanny pack that shoots rainbows out? <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's an interesting choice for sure. <laughs> it's like, yeah, look at it. It's like, me. Are you going to jetpack that early? <laughs> yeah. Right at the beginning, the yeah. Game. It's one of the, like the main mechanics that like, like, um, right away is that you get the jetpack. You can upgrade, you can upgrade it. It'll, you know go faster fly further apparently some people were like you be you be, like you get to be like iron man later on yeah the trailer like, showed sure. people just flying around full speed yeah, yeah yeah i'm sure that's really cool later on but to start with <laughs> your rainbow fanny pack is just wow it's yeah. perfect for my channel <laughs> yeah but yeah anyways so co like i'm interested to see like you played it for a long time which like kind of surprised me actually so i want to see like i want to hear what you like Okay. Found it. First of all, somebody said this in chat, and I just want to make absolutely sure. Are you sure you didn't play the Surge and not Elix One? Are you sure you played Elix One? No, I looked on Steam, so I'm 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 confusing them in my head. You're right. Because but I did I'm looking on the Steam hours played, and the hours played was is sixteen. Because Elix One is Elix Two is kind of like just a better Elix One in almost every it like the combat's better, the graphics are better, like it it's I'm wondering God damn it. I'm wondering what I anyway. remember about it. So, so Elix two, uh, Elix two. I am kind of really loving it. Um, I'm definitely like uh, sixteen ish hours in now, uh, doing a lot of exploring, kind of going all around the world. Elix is by a company called Piranha Bytes, and Piranha Bytes made Gothic the uh, Gothic one, two, three. Um, they they've made Elix one. They Piranha Bytes is a company of about. 30 ish people and they are kind of really well known for we'll, we'll say biting off more than they can chew um <laughs> their projects are always incredibly ambitious and generally a little bit out of scope for a company of their size like even for AAA companies how much they try to do in these games is generally just way 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 too much um and that and that's the same for elix 2 now granted i feel like elix 2 is kind of piranha bites at its best um, I really like the world. Uh, I've been having fun exploring around it. The the animations and faces are a lot better than one. Combat is less less clunky than one. 
Uh, they completely uh, uh, flesh out the jetpack system. So at my point in my game, you know, I can like go up, go forward and like just rocket forward for like 10 seconds at a time going, you know, at, like warp speed, which is awesome. I do that all the time. It's a lot of fun. I'm doing a range playthrough. So I've got like, you know, a shotgun. I've got a bow. I've got like a plasma rifle. I've got some other stuff. I'm looking for a grenade launcher right now. I uh, just got some like kind of sci-fi armor and stuff. But I, I have been having a good time with it. But the big thing is that it's all about managing expectations. Like I enjoy games that have a little jank to them because I can focus on the parts that I really like about them. Like the huge open world, the hundreds and hundreds of items, the fact that you know, behind every corner there's loot to get. The more you explore, the more you get back. You know, th things like that are everywhere in this game. You can go anywhere in this game world, and it's a huge world. And you, what was the moment of realization, Zeke? No, I, I looked up a YouTube uh, video. It was a last week in Zeke highlight video. And now I remember parts of this. And I remember that some of the conversations were fucking hilarious in the first one, too. Yep. So, like, yeah, I, I guess I had more fun with the first one than I had with this one right, like right away, immediately. Probably. Yeah, okay. Um, but anyway, like right. the, the things about this game that are never going to be AAA, the, the, the combat systems are still pretty janky. I mean, even just aiming with a, with a weapon like this, um, there's like some weird mouse drifting issues and stuff with the <laughs> aiming. The combat is still uh, chunky. It's made in German. German is their, their default language. So the translations and stuff, even though they have good voice actors this time around, even the animations of the face are pretty good. There's a lot of weirdness in the dialogue that doesn't really mesh well sometimes. Like, you know, like someone will ask a question and the other person will respond by repeating the question to their face and then just mention something completely different. And then the person answering the question or that asked the question originally just says something that's not even related to the conversation. Like there's weirdness <laughs> that happens, you know, yeah. but it's, it's the I kind of thing of where it makes sense in German, like it makes sense in German. <laughs> Maybe, probably <laughs> I would think. Up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing where I've had a really good time with it and I'm still enjoying it. I'm, I'm still going to see where it goes. The story is. Uh, a little weird, but kind of interesting. I'm I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to work and how much control you have over the world and stuff like that. And uh, I enjoyed the first game. I had like 50 hours in it. Um, went back, returned to it. Got about another 20 to 30 in it before this one came out. Didn't finish that playthrough, but I don't mind the games. I've in, I've enjoyed games like this since Gothic One. Um, but I mean, you know, anytime I I talk about liking this game, it always comes with a caveat where it's like my expectations are managed. Like, I know what I'm getting into with this game. I know the dialogue's going to be weird. I know the combat's going to be a little clunky. Like, I'm not going in expecting a, a AAA, or even in some cases, like a AA experience. It's a very indie, an indie, an indie style game with a huge scope. So, you know, I can let a lot of that other stuff slide and just have fun with what I'm playing and, and have a good time with it, which I feel like a lot of Piranha Bytes fans can do well. Um, but is this like a game for general consumption? Not really. I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people are going to really quickly find things that turn them off about this game. Um, if if you approach it like wanting a a, a full double or triple A experience, um, but if you don't, there's a lot of really fun, good stuff. Just getting around with the jetpacks, a lot of fun. The world is beautiful. Like I said, there's items and stuff everywhere. So I'm going to be playing it tonight and probably going to keep playing it at least in the cozy stream, if not more during the day streams, and uh, having a good time with it. Since I didn't get to explore like a lot of the open world or basically any of it. Um, it was hard for me like the, to reconcile the fifty dollar price tag with what I saw, you know. Yeah. Like I've seen ten dollar indie games that do like graphically do better, uh, like facial like like I mentioned that like the lip animation, the whatever program they're using to like mimic the speech, really good. But if you get up close, it's one of those cases where you look up close with their mouth movements. And you see, like, behind their teeth, there's, like, a void, like, space. Oh, the Assassin's Creed effect? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> and it's just, like, really, like, you're, it's jarring a little bit. Because if you see them from, a, like, a side view, like, a profile, and they're talking, like, it looks great. But then you see them full on, like, and they're, like, a, a black hole of, of, you know, or, a, like, a white space of void is, like, behind their mouth. And it's just, like, now go back to the profile, dude. That's way better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's the fifty dollar price tag for is probably due to how much stuff there is in the game or how much landscape there is, you know, real estate yeah. within the game, rather than you know, like uh, like the upfront like look of it, you know. Makes sense. Does every character look like the Green Arrow? 
Is that a? <laughs> is that? Am I? Is that what I'm picking up on, or is is there some customization for characters in this? No, you you play Jax. Oh, you play, you play, this play character. an actual okay. character from the first game. This game takes place shortly after that first game. Um, okay. So, yeah. And someone said to love you, <laughs> you have to love the older school games that weren't as streamlined as now. That's not the case. I love those games, but like it's 2022, and there's a certain expectation with a game that is released in 2022, right? For me, um, person. Can I just real quick address the person in chat that says Co liked this because he was paid to play it? Uh, were you here for Babylon's? <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'll yeah, counter that, that point. I was paid to play it too. <laughs> I'm going to counter that point and say, absolutely, person in chat. You keep typing that in every time. <laughs> 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 no, it's funny because someone else, a, a longtime fan of the game, actually just asked. They said, um, no trolling. When you take a sponsored stream like for Babylon's Fall and didn't enjoy it and then speak about it negatively, does it make you feel any type of way? If I was in that situation, I would have felt bad talking negatively about it. Just wanted your thoughts. And that's a great question. But yeah. the thing is, is, and, and this is so important to mention, especially <clears throat> publicly and frequently, when a streamer takes a sponsored stream, they are never at any point sponsored to like the game. They're not sponsored to talk favorably about the game. Yeah. You are sponsored to play that game on your channel to show it to your audience. I guarantee you, with every single word I ever said about Babylon's Fall, someone will watch that stream and go buy the game because it looked good. And that's exactly what they pay us to stream the yeah, games it's for. Like it, doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all it's about not a recommendation. So it is. It is. It is incredibly important to understand. We we are not paid to sell you games. And that's one of the reasons it's so great about our job because I know that I can say things about Babylon's Fall and that company has already offered me another sponsorship and thanked me for my feedback at the end of the stream. So it's like they 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 don't care if how you feel about it. They care that you play the game for the time they paid you for and that's it. Yep. So it's 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 a it's a very nice thing that we do not have to worry about in our field. It is more well, important and- for us to be honest than it is than to to try to sell you a product that we don't feel good about because at that point i mean if we if if i were to just speak positively about babylon's fall for instance and then you bought the game and it sucked well that's going to be an erosion of confidence between me and you and then yeah. the next time you want to sub to my channel you may go hey you know what this guy sold me on a bad game and, you know it's pretty obvious this game's bad but he, he said he liked it and looked good so it's like why why would any streamer ever do that why would we want to lie like it's just anyway what are we saying Z? yeah uh, just just to speak from a a different a different standpoint as far as you know viewership numbers and that kind of thing um i feel that i i feel the need to be a little bit more i don't feel the, i don't ever feel the need to lie and I, or, or i will never lie but i will be more diplomatic than I, I would think than someone like a smaller streamer i'm not a small streamer by any means i'm not trying to say that i'm just saying like that does matter and it does go at uh, like uh uh we take that into I, I take that into consideration when I talk about games uh, that I play and that kind of stuff. As as far as is especially if they're just garbage dog shit, I can't like I there's no way I can like Babylon. It seemed like Babylon was just dog dog shit. Uh, that I can't. I wouldn't hold back for that. But if it's something like this that has some jank that has some you know stuff like that, but it has a lot of like you know. It's a, it's a good game, or it's a it's a well put together game that you can play. It's not broken by any means, you know. I'm more diplomatic yeah. about it because okay. I feel like my like my sponsorships are less likely than Coe's. He's going to be courted more often than I will be, based on sheer numbers. So, with that in mind, I d- I am a little bit more uh, self editing. Like I won't just outright shit on it. Uh, the, the the day of, we'll say. <laughs> I sure. was waiting. I was excited. Like, are we going to talk about Elix second half? Because I got some things to say about it. Like, <laughs> I was excited to talk about it on this show. But like day of, maybe I'm a little bit more reserved, and that's the truth. Um, I'm not lying, but I'm I'm not saying everything that I that I you know would say in a, a unedited stream of consciousness. You know. There's, there's also something to be said about like, we, we are, I know it just seems like we're guys playing video games, guys and girls playing video games at the end of the day, but there is something to be said about streamers that carry themselves in a more professional manner, especially when companies are paying us a huge amount. It's, it's one thing to go, Hey, I don't like this game because of this. 
I don't think this game is great because of this. I think this game is lacking this, this, and this. It's an entirely another thing to be like, this game is absolute shit. This game is dog <laughs> shit. You shouldn't touch it. It's bad. It's terrible. Like, you know, you, you can, you can, there are different, just like Zeke said, like there are ways to hold yourself professionally and still get the exact same point across um, mm -hmm. to people that are listening. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely that kind of thing. Too. Do yeah. not clip that without context. <laughs> you yeah. big brute. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anyways. Constructive criticism. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's Helix too. And that's also a conversation on streaming. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And sponsors. Random, random segue into streaming there. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Uh, what else? Well, and, and for anybody like, uh, I just want to like pose this situation to you. Like, there is a streamer of like a hypothetical streamer of like a smaller size, like two, 200, 300 concurrence usually. And they get a sponsor thing and you're like, they, they hated it. And they, they totally tell you their mind right away. Like, and you love that. You're like, yeah, they say their mind. They're honest. They're totally the, and then they don't get any more sponsorships. And you're like, why don't they get any more sponsorships? Like, you know, <laughs> yes, they were, the, you know, it's, it's, it if you want that shit, you gotta be a little, you gotta, you don't, I never, told anyone to lie and i don't i don't recommend that you lie just choose your words it's very but true it's very true the only other game i've played by the way for two hours because my community made me play it was genshin impact we don't have to talk about it but i know and understand how genshin impact is these days let's move on <laughs> and no i did not spend any money while playing genshin impact for those that were curious uh have you ever do what have you ever spent money in Genshin? No, yeah. I I had not played it till this past week. Oh, oh okay, this is your first time. It. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were re like going back to it. Nope, I never oh. I never played it or anything. I I made uh well I made I watched Strippin and uh, influenced him to spend money and got my kicks off of watching him spend money in the game when it came out whenever that was years ago. It feels like. Yep. So I it was, that was one of those things where I was like, man, this this part of the game is fun. Oh, there's gameplay. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to this. And then I like I, I immediately like I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put fifty bucks in this. There you go. And then I was like, I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put a little bit more. And yeah. then at two hundred dollars, was like, I'm not even playing the game. I should quit. And I quit. <laughs> Thankfully, I was I, got, I was able to walk away I got after two hundred bones bucks. out of you. I got two hundred bucks out of like me for like I don't know how long, like maybe maybe ten hours total. Damn. I got you good. I'm a gambler, though. I'm the fucking, I'm the dupe. Yeah. I'm the guy you want. You're the sucker. Like, playing your stupid game for money. I'm that <laughs> asshole. But I didn't keep going, though. That's, that's you know. It's true. Good job, me. It's true. Uh, Kobe, I haven't had uh, you on since you finished Horizon. We talked briefly about it last week. Uh, I was the only one that had finished it, though. Uh, they stuck the landing. That's all I said. That's, oh, loved it. Yeah, I thought yeah. the landing was great. Absolutely loved it. I, I really, really enjoyed my time, it, especially after Dying Light 2. I was oh, super God. glad to see a game not only end well, but end on like a high note. Like there, there was this particularly one part about the ending that made me like cheer, like when it happened. Um, like, like, can you uh, allude to that part? To, what part? Not was to that? spoil it too much, but yeah. it's like, you know, dude goes up and then it's like, then he starts coming back down and you're like, yeah you know like this is gonna happen like okay this is all this is all gonna be a thing nice, and yeah. I, I i think it's awesome how they left the doors open and i i i really really enjoyed it. um i thought it was great and uh, i went back and did some side stuff and, and i'd kind of like to go back and elden ring kind of took over my life when it came out as it kind of wish they had been released a little bit further apart yeah. i think it would have been so incredible if I hate to say it, but I, I do feel it would have been so incredible if Forbidden West could have held its original release date. I think that we, that it would have it would have overall been a lot better for it. Yep. Um. But but the the big thing that Gorilla has been public about is pushing it back made it so they didn't have to crunch. That's awesome. That there's there's no that's that's there's never that it's never a bad thing. So that's that's great. Um. And good on Gorilla for you know essentially making that sacrifice. That's kind of what they did at the end of the day. They had to know putting themselves next to Elden Ring would have would have caused this, especially with the length of the game and how much there is to do. So, yeah, I mean, good on good on Gorilla. But yeah, end of the day, it was phenomenal. I liked everything about it. 
I, I had a great time with it from, from beginning to end. And it, it was really great to see it end in a way that was entertaining, engaging, and like leaves all the doors open and just like you end feeling more energetic than when you started, you know, through that stream. That's awesome. Yep. That's really cool. Uh, if someone were to say to you that Horizon for Ben West is the best looking game of all time, what do you say to that? It's not. What's the best looking game of all time? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I oh, thought you're you saying, said best. You're saying. I thought you said best f***ing game of all time. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, no, I'm sorry. Um, do I think that, do I think that it's. I mean, I had a serious thought, like, is it the I will best say this. looking I will game say this. I've seen? And I think it might be. In terms of characters, it is the best looking game that is available. And that is because the game nails one thing in particular. And a viewer actually sent me a message and he was like, I've been listening about a lot of the stuff you say about Horizon and you keep missing this one term that I think is so important and that it really sums up everything that you've been talking about. And here's the thing. There is no game in existence that has ever nailed nonverbal communication more than Horizon Forbidden West. It is in a league not only of its own, but that is so far ahead of other games that it's like it's, it's in its own category. The ability for the game, it feels like every single person you talk to is mo-capped just for that by a good actor or a real person that actually said those lines and meant it. Like, it is, it is incredible. Um, absolutely, I, feel, I, I felt so much. Oh, and, well, I never played L.A. Noir. Full disclosure. <laughs> so a lot of people are saying, L.A. Noir, L.A. Noir. I haven't played that game. Yeah. Um, I need to someday. I still think but, Horizon um, looks... But yeah, and, and, and so I do need to play L.A. Noir, full disclosure. But yeah. I will say, uh, I, I felt so much more engaged in Horizon over, say, like Last of Us 2. Um, Last of Us 2 felt muted in comparison. Like, I felt like Horizon was more of like a theatrical performance where, sure, you could argue that maybe the Last of Us 2 stuff was a bit more realistic at times, but like Horizon feels like you're watching a movie or a play. Like, everyone has like energy and they have their own kind of like experience behind their words and they have like a lot of feeling in their like it really it really is the difference between like a realistic drama and like again watching a theater performance and i think that for a video game i think that that theatrical approach really works well um and it's just it's incredibly well done when you mesh that with the incredible graphics like just incredible the way that those graphics come through you put those two systems together and the presentation is again completely second to none yeah, yeah. it's exciting uh to see i think a game look uh that well i'm i'm very excited for the future uh with things like god of war and, and also things that aren't cross-generational right like that's also ps4 ps5 seeing like a fully made sony first party studio that's only on ps5 whatever that game is uh is pretty exciting because it's it's probably gonna look really 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 pretty i guess it maybe will be uh maybe spider-man will be like the first one of those uh, whatever the maybe. next spider-man is spider-man mm -hmm. 2 or, or whatever yeah, they could probably make that look really good in a giant city. So we will see. Uh, Zeke, I come to you with seven minutes for indies. I <laughs> offer you seven minutes. <laughs> uh, seven minutes. I know you've been playing a lot of Resident Evils. Yeah. We, we can mention those yep. uh, and, and keep uh, keep racking up the indie days because you did Indie Week and now another indie uh, Saturday yeah. since then. What brought on all the Resident Evil stuff? Where where did just cause? Uh, no, someone actually, uh, Johnny Scar, who's a, a longtime friend and mod in my oh, channel, Johnny. Uh, gave me pre gifted me the original uh, and kind of more difficult to find CD ROMs of Resident Evil One, Two, and Three. Yeah. So for the PC uh, specifically. Yes. Yeah. Those and are I did not, hard. I did not play them. Uh, I told Johnny, I said. God, these are great gifts, but I'm not going to play them during CD-Ramathon because I kind of want to play them all, you know? Because they're great they're great games. I played all the remakes, but I never played the, the originals. Um, so, they came time, like, I was like, since I'm not playing Elden Ring, the fuck I'm am I going to play? And I, I, I looked to my left, and I was like, they were still sitting there. I hadn't, you know, put them away, and I'm like, that's a great plan. Let's do that. That'll be, a, you know... A good a good haven for people who want to watch something else other than Elden Ring. So and it's been great. It's been a it's been a fucking hoot, especially the first one, uh, with with all the Jill sandwiches and dialogue. Dude, the dialogue and, in there is. I mean, that's some of the video game 
legendary com- oh, yeah. <laughs> comments in there. The master of lock picking. That, I still remember that to date. Master of unlocking. Master of unlocking. You're correct. Not lock picking, unlocking. You're which correct. Which is a distinct difference. You are correct. That. Uh, but yeah, so the, yeah, it, I had watched, like there was a little bit of, uh, of nostalgia or callback for me because I had, I've watched them do speed runs of that uh, on uh, various GDQs and stuff, but I had totally forgotten how just delicious the dialogue is just organically. Like I didn't know like when it would come up because, you know, watching speed runs, you don't really watch the game. You don't know how like how long in between the dialogue shit because it's unskippable. Yeah, that's the that's the biggest thing. Like it's unskippable in the game, and it's an awesome, fun game. Frustrating, albeit you know with tank controls and how slow you like turn to face stuff. Uh, if you like, you got to figure out like untarget, retarget will like get you back to you know whatever. But the end of that game, holy fuck, is the hugest fuck you to, to players <laughs> like wow holy moly do they hate do they like there's some hate coming from the devs like Wait, is that you got you got this far in the game guess what if you didn't stock up with you know ammo healing items stuff like that there ain't no fucking way you're gonna get through this without reloading a previous save and guess what's in those previous saves Five minutes of cutscene that you can't skip with the fucking shittiest dialogue. <laughs> if you get unlucky, or if, you, if you do something like dumb on one of those, uh, ne- or uh, not Nemesis, um, one of those tyrant fights, if you do something yes, dumb tyrant. on one of those tyrant fights, guess what? You gotta listen to the whole fucking thing again, homie. Good job. Good luck. So you don't want to go back to a previous save, but you have to. I had to. I had, I had no healing items. I had good. I had enough weapons and ammo, but I I was like, it's a video game. If they're gonna put a big boss fight. They're gonna give you something. They do not, and they do not give you the opportunity to go back for anything either. So if you spent your healing items, and you don't have any, you have to load a previous save or get really lucky on uh, the last fight, or be really skilled. I Who, suppose. <clears throat> is it is the last fight just another form of nemesis? Or another tyrant? It's a tyrant fight. Yeah, okay. You fight the tyrant twice. Uh, like, spoiler alert for a, you know, 96 game. Yeah. But, yeah, you fight the tyrant twice. Almost 30 and, year uh, old game. Fuck. Second time, it's harder, and Jesus. he's faster. He doesn't just walk. He runs up to you, and he can just randomly run up to you and do the a wombo combo and take all of your life. It just slice, slice, stab through the gut, lift you up, and you're dead. So... I had no healing items. Oh, I had no healing items, but also I had I was on like the red caution of health. So oh, going into it, I, Jeez. I, I tried fighting it. I tried doing it. I want to say like at least a dozen times, and I'm just like this is not happening. I can't do it. Well, it's it's hard to be good with tank controls <laughs> unless you've played tank controls for a long time. I'm so yeah. glad you said that because there's a lot of times I'm like. Dude, they're off. Am I it, bad? It, Am I really just really bad? No, people people don't know how bad these games control unless they've played these games. They're, I mean, you're not just spinning the stick in a circle. Yeah. You're, it's, it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> there's a reason tough. you don't see tank controls anymore. Yeah, you know, it was a like one and done yeah. thing. Or I, did they still have them in Resident Evil Two? I want to say they still did. Right, some some form of them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I think they're still present up to because those are both PS1 games, right? Four until four. Yeah, up to four. Oh, I guess that does make sense. They probably made those. Uh, yeah, one, two, quickly. three. I believe so. I think. That's why four, I guess, was so revolutionary for FPS games on consoles because it it changed. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I I played that last year for the first time. I had never played Resident Evil four. I played all the Resident Evils in a weird order. I started <laughs> yeah, with. You really five. did. <laughs> it's six, seven. Eight. You got the best then, ones right out of the yeah. gate. It really, just Duncan like, Jedi says, "I like tank controls, Sag. It's okay. Some of us are masochists. We enjoy we enjoy inflicting pain on ourselves. That's yeah. fine. It's understandable. That's true. It's okay, and and keep doing you for sure. That's true. No, hey, tank controls are great in a straight line or just a just one turn. But you got to turn around. Fuck you. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. It's, it's, like, there's no, like, in RE1, there's no hot, hot swat or, like, hot key to, like, you know, flip Turn direction. Around, like, yeah. it. it's, I got to <sighs> look behind me. Look, that, that guy might be a tank operator. You know, he might actually drive a tank. It, who knows? Yeah. Who could say? No, but it, it, it was fun up until that last part. But it, that did definitely felt like the devs were laughing maniacally. Like Louise and Bob's Burgers just like, ah, ha, 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 you don't have any healing items. <laughs> guess what? Unskippable cutscenes. You get two of them. And guess what the last one is? It's an alarm that blares for three minutes. Oh, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I, I mean, it was 96. They were probably just like, I hope someone plays our game. I hope someone <laughs> actually like know, knows that we exist and plays a version of this at some point in time. Yeah. Also, real quick, for those that haven't heard the term, uh, tank controls are basic. Think first person controls in third person. So tank controls are when, when W moves the character forward, uh, A and D actually spin the character left and right. And then s moves the character backward so it's it's very heavily based on the character's perspective like where the character is in the world so like different controls can feel like they're doing different things at different times some people actually do like tank controls but these days the the idea basically is that like with a thumbstick wherever you move the thumbstick your character goes that way that's not what tank controls are they're yeah. actually they're from the perspective of the character so it's it's not nearly as intuitive or easy to use uh you kind of have to most people kind of have to fight with it a little bit. Yep. yep. No sharp turning, I would say, yeah. in that it's all a curve, a curve turn. Like, if you you do a lot of S's in this game, like in games like this. That's correct. Yeah. I a lot still, of old uh, adventure games use tank controls, too. Like dude, the Monkey Island, Grim Fandango. Yep. Did somebody just mentioned chat. For 1996, man, this game is great. Like it, I it, still... As far as, dude, I, yeah. I watched my brother. I, I remember the exact location and time of day of watching my brother play this game while sitting on the couch behind him eating apple strudel bites and being scared like a motherfucker when he opened the door and the dogs came like howling through <laughs> the very oh, yeah. beginning and thinking like oh my god this game's so realistic i'm never gonna open our front door again what if those dogs are outside yeah yeah i remember this it's, it's i forgot classic. the creepiest like one of the creepiest scenes in the game where the the anime lawyer looking guy who has the ponytail with the one like hair coming down that's in the prison yeah you see you meet him a second time and he's being attacked by a liquor and you see this like thing you're like what the fuck and he's like oh oh my chest and he goes it doesn't it's not like alien oh, yeah. you know like i expected like a chest burster i was like oh i've seen this before yeah. no he splits down the side and the fucking guy like hello my baby hello my honey <laughs> like, fucking comes out he's like hey bye peace i'm out Boop. And you're like, if it's, I was, it was terrifying. Like, if I was a kid watching this, I would shit. I would Dude, shit my. And it was '96. Like you yeah. didn't see that type of shit really at all uh, back then in any really form of media. And if you did, it was like yeah. a super R-rated film or some some anime or some shit. So, yeah. Well, it's crazy. I finished that finally. Uh, I, I was going into the late hours of a stream one. I was like, I'm gonna try one more time. And I tried one more time. I was like. All right, I'm gonna try this tomorrow. I'm gonna go back to a different save. Ended up doing that, saving up some some uh, healing items. By the time we got there, I had to listen through all the cutscenes, both of them. And uh, but we finally got down. Started Resident Evil Two. Resident Evil Two is just just a dream, just a easy dream breeze when compared to the the first one as far as mechanically. Yeah, like it's still tank controls. But boy, there's a lot of improvements. And it's not nearly as frustrating. I do miss the dialogue, I will say. But there are some cool lines in RE2 thus far. And also, I didn't know that I only played the remake. I didn't know that uh, the first time through, there's uh, there's no Mr. X. Yeah. There's no Mr. X on, on, on Leon A. Yep. That's true. There, there's, there's a couple changes throughout those games, so... Uh, I would be remiss, Zeke. Let's let's do an indie of the week. Just name it. Name your favorite indie that you've played the last awesome. week, and that's it. <laughs> that's uh, all I will allow game, you, sir. Then I gotta go. Just the <laughs> game. I, the game I played yesterday is Who's Lila. It is a. It is in this in the graphical style of Oberdin. Okay. Uh, pixely, like old art. It's a trip. It was a fucking mind trip, and I was immediately like. 
there's there's uh meta elements to it that i just fucking blew my like i love it when they do that they're like here's a twitter address you go to the twitter address and it it's outside of the game but it relates to the game i love shit like that there was another like an outside like program i had to find that actually like you have it up while you're playing the game weird okay dude it's fucking cool man and i'm gonna give it a day like a, a full stream it's, it's called who's it lila Super, intri- super intriguing yeah the basic premise of the of the game to start with is that you are someone who can't show emotions so uh. when you talk to somebody you have to grab parts of their face and like pull up make a smile like and pull their eyebrows and you end up making these horrific faces like look at the trailer on on steam it's it's worth it but you end up making these horrific faces but it's like you have a time limit it's like that's a smile and you're like Ugh! like this horror face like <laughs> You would like have like uh, uh like six or seven emotions to pick from like surprised or uh, yeah surprised happy sad scared angry disgusted like that kind of shit, but you have to like pull like twelve spots on their face like lips and nose and eyebrows and stuff like that to make them look like that because he's like you think he's like a sociopath because he doesn't know how to show emotion. Okay, it, that's the premise, but it goes way deeper and it's fucking cool. Who's Lila? Check it out. Who's Lila? We'll show it next week. Talk about it next week. Let's do some shout outs and then uh, call it a show. Zeke, start us off. Yo, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, Co and JP, for being wonderful co hosts. I love talking about Elden Ring. I could do it for five, six hours because I love that game. It's been so fun. Uh, and I'm going to play it right after this, but not on stream. Uh, I'm off after this and I'm off tomorrow. I take Mondays off, so I'll see you Tuesday for the continuation of Resident Evil 2. And on our way to three, because we're going to do one, two, and three. So I uh, hope to see you there. 10 a.m. Pacific is when I stream. Follow me on all the things. Ezekiel underscore I, I, I. Thanks for watching. Awesome. Co, do some shout outs. As always, a big thanks to JP and Zeke. Fun show this week. Thank you guys, always, as always, for watching. Uh, my name is Co. I going to be playing more Elden Ring and Elix 2 over the next few days. We're going to try to slot in Shadow Warrior 3 at some point. Then down the road, we've got Strangers of Paradise. We've got Tiny Tina's Wonderland. We've got Ghostwire Tokyo. We've got Weird West. We've got a lot of stuff coming up the rest of the month. So hope to see you here for it. It'll be a lot of fun. And as always, thank you guys for watching. If I don't see my channel, see you guys here next week. Rob Frames. Awesome stuff. Thank you both for joining us. I'll be jumping into, I think I'm just going to say final days. Because I don't, it's, I was thinking I was going to see the final boss yesterday. Then I played for seven hours and I never got, it was all side stuff. That's how that game functions. So. I'll be playing some more after this final days of Elden Ring uh, in our playthrough. We're kind of trying to find everything or at least as much as you can in the first run. Uh, I do want to check out the Destiny campaign that's coming out. And then Strangers of Paradise and Tiny Tina is also on my list uh, as the month progresses forward. Uh, there will not be a show on the 20th of this month. I'll be uh, going out of town um so the 13th next week we're still on off the next week and then we'll do another show on the 27th um and then apart from that i think i'm gonna play some D D on stream uh we've got a dm who wants to do some stuff with us so i might uh i might play some D D. we'll see how that goes elden ring's yeah, got I'll... me thinking about uh D D. awesome in a weird way uh Anyways. before we go just one little funny sentence that i think is really great let's hear it Exit midnight for my, my for my chat said tank controls feel like marmite tastes. Yeah, just because some people like it doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, it's accurate. It's accurate. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right, that's it for drop frames. Thank you guys for joining us. We will be back next week, and probably won't spend a full two hours on the Elton Ring, but you know who knows. We'll we'll try to get that uh, full show together uh, sometime soon with uh, maybe Max or. I don't know. Some less attractive people, as Zeke was saying. That that's a uh, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Please. Yeah, we're out here. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> bye bye. Have a good rest of your week.